friends, welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we look at movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic. I'm your host, Josh Griffey, joined by my fellow bumpkin handyman and subterranean worm monster and co-host, Alex Dandino. It's a lot of titles. He's a man who wears many hats. All right, guys, uh, as always, if you like the show, which we hope you do, we're meeting more and more of you by the day. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Please share us on your social medias. That helps us out a ton to find other movie lovers. Uh, You can find us on our social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, uh, Film Alchemist 1 on Twitter. We're very active there. Email the show, whatever uh, floats your boat, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com with movie suggestions and the like. If you're listening to us on an app where you're able to leave a rating and review, please do so. That helps us out a ton. Again, more uh, new movie viewers for us to find. And, uh, you know, that's it. You can find us on YouTube. If you want to see how handsome these uh, the faces behind the voice are, and you're not afraid of having a Phantom of the Opera-like reveal, <laughs> come find us on YouTube. Uh, the Nerd Alchemist. That's plural with an S at the end. So you can see our... Our hideous, chuddly faces as we uh, we talk about movies. That's right. We look awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're back. Our schedule's off of here. We're one day late. This won't happen again, I promise. It's my fault because of my, my sicknesses. But, guys, we're still shaking our bacon uh, this entire January. These uh, films are a selection of movies to honor the great Kevin Bacon. I don't know that I would say he's necessarily the film alchemist kind of archetype spirit animal actor but he's close he's second only to nick cage nick cage is probably our purest spirit animal yes Th- there's like a class right there are actors that just fa- have the, there's the nick cage kevin bacon oliver platt these are the spirit Clancy animals of brown the film we've got guys we've got yeah. guys christopher lambert because he had you know the best movie Never, that's neither here nor there we'll get to that <laughs> i still have a, a double feature i can't wait to do it should have been lambert it's just movies that should have had Christopher Lambert as the main actor. But that's neither here nor there. We're not shaking enough bacon. So today, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed Hollow Man. <laughs> Such an amazing treat to revisit. It had been a minute for me. Yeah. Uh, today, we're doing Tremors. And if I had to put my money all the way on the line, I think this is the best Kevin Bacon ever was. Ooh, wow. I think wow. this is the pinnacle of Kevin Bacon Mountain. It highlights perfectly every single thing he's amazing at. It's a perfect genre flick because it does everything you want and then goes above and beyond. Um, the only thing, the only bacon points you can take away from it, no but. One no of the but. few movies of Kevin Bacon from this era that just decided to do no butt shots. Definitely lacks nudity, which they <laughs> need, which there's a, there's quite a few spots you could have thrown it in at. Oh, like he's just climbing up a wall and like the tentacle like just drops the trousers a bit. When we get well, that real top bacon butt, you could have done it for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I really think the opportunity was that uh, Rhonda scene where they put where the worm pulls her pants off. That's that right. should have been Kevin Bacon. That should have been K Bakes. That's right. For sure. Earl should have been pulling his pants off. That's what happens right before the movie starts. We'll get to that. <laughs> All right. Alex, walk me through why trimmers. Am I insane for saying this is peak bacon? Walk me through your initial thoughts. <sighs> I mean, I got to tell you, I don't think you are like this is I mean, what I love about Tremors, because I remember seeing this when I like I caught this on TV when I was probably like 10 Mm -hmm. and maybe younger. I don't really remember. But I mean, I don't think you're wrong because this is a movie that knows full well what kind of movie it is. It's a nostalgia movie. It's a throwback to like creature features of the 50s. It stars Kevin Bacon and Burt Ward at roughly the height of their power in 1990. Mm -hmm. Um, And. On top of that, it has like it has all of the earmarks of like classic sci-fi and all of the earmarks of a great bacon performance. You have him uh, doing a lot of athletic things. You have him doing that like it, it's it's this face a lot. I don't know if you know it's this is that that yeah. that Kevin Bacon face <laughs> is very important to me. Like throughout my entirety <laughs> throughout the entirety of Kevin Bacon's career, that face sold so many movies to the yeah. viewing public. He's uh, not so beautiful that he can't just don this hideous gargoyle face. Yeah, it's wonderful. And like, it's a I great mean, Kevin Bacon attribute. Also, he has probably one of my all-time finisher lines at the end of this movie, which we'll get to. But uh, 
Like, yeah. it, no curse words or anything like that. Just one of my all-time finisher lines. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, what I love most about Tremors, and this is the funny thing, Tremors is one of my very first movie theater experiences that I fully remember. Because uh, my father only picked us up every other week and was just a horrible, horrible as a parental supervision kind of guy. <laughs> so he's kind of like, we're at McDonald's. I'm mm-hmm. dying to see Tremors. I should surely take my six and five-year-old son to see this. <laughs> Why not? It was that time you know, of life. So I remember sitting in the theater watching this and being fucking terrified for weeks that there could just be giant insectoid monsters living underneath my feet. Oh, totally. But as you get older, right, what you find about this movie, I was struck by, because essentially this movie is Jaws, right? They're, they're playing the exact yeah. Jaws playbook. Yeah. But what they did is they wrote, every character has just perfect little quirks. What I, what I took from Tremors this time around, besides the fact that Val and Earl are just a perfect buddy comedy duo to follow around, right? Just right, right. fantastic chemistry between the two of them. But what I really think everything in Tremors boils down to is the script for Tremors is so fucking razor sharp. Yes. It, and it's it's one of those things in a movie like Tremors. I bet if you had to like poll people or make, you know, make your assumption of what is going to be the best thing in this movie, how many people would have script in the top 10? But it's razor sharp in the way it sets up the first act and the premise. Yeah. The way it keeps Val and Earl, you know, in this kind of game. Every character has a fun little quirk that validates them being one of the characters beyond just a body. Right. And it's the once we get to the fun in games, that's normally where these movies are much less interesting, right? Once oh, yeah, Bruce but- starts eating the boat, it's not nearly as interesting as the barrel and singing the song, right? Right. It's it's just the way it is. This movie, because they are so clever in how they they utilize the visual approximations of the worm. And the fun in games, I feel like it never lets off for the entirety of the movie. It's a right. razor I, sharp hour and a half that is constantly fun and clever. Yeah, I mean, I think the advantage this movie has is it actually does what all great movies like this should be doing, which is it starts as a two-hander and continues that way, but then you surround the two-hander with all these like fun little characters. Like Again, my probably like my greatest memory from this movie when I was a kid was Burton and Heather Gummer. Like that oh, was Oh yeah, like, the survivalist. Like those are the that's the thing I remembered the most when I was a kid. And that was the thing that struck me the most again when I was like, wow, this is absolutely like perfectly switch situated for our times. Like these fucking like again, it's it's that line it's that same line, it's like, what's the cannon fuse for? My cannon. Like yeah, I mean my you know, cannon, duh. Again, it, like this, like the, the and gummers. also, what's great is that that character went on to be in essentially all of the next fifteen Tremor movies. Yeah, all of I, which are on Netflix, by the way, and it's fucking outstanding. It's wonderful. But yeah, the gummers are probably like even more than Val and Earl, the most, and they they have such a small role because all they're there to do is shoot guns and throw like grenades. But like right. they're they're the most relevant in my brain. Sim- but that shows the testament of like then the sub- subsequent trailers. They are the ones that show up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So the movie starts right, and this is kind of the fun thing about Tremors is, for the first twenty minutes ish of this movie, this could just be city slickers. You know, sure. I mean, I, before twenty minutes, we're starting to see some hints of chaos. But it starts with these really great opening scenes, right? Of So you just have Val and Earl, and they wake up in the truck, just sleeping in a truck in the middle of nowhere. Right. Right. They kind of have this funny who made breakfast yesterday, rock, paper, scissors gimmick. And it just sets them up already. You're like, what a charming little, like, friends or maybe lovers. We don't know yet. <laughs> and it's just, it's really charming. Like, their, their chemistry between these two it just immediately bubbles off the screen. You feel, you honestly believe that these people have been together for years and years and years before we pressed, you know, roll or ran the film, right? Right, right. Since it was the 90s, you know, run the film. But you you honestly believe it. <laughs> and then we kind of get into this almost waiting for uh, Godot, waiting for Worm Doe, I guess, as it were, of just them, like, working on the fence. Like, is this the work of intelligent men? <laughs> right? And, like debating their lowly lot in life and this happens for like 10 minutes in a row and i was like if this was the whole movie i would watch that movie oh yeah like there's a version of this that is an amazing just black box theater show you would see in la right right (laughs) 
there's an amazing version of this is like, like sort of this like hybrid waiting for uh waiting for a uh, Godot slash uh of mice and men you know like yeah. this weird little two-hander uh black box <laughs> theater show or just well here we are again today just like you know that's the show but then they find a way to like spice it up obviously with these wonderful uh these wonderful sandworms the graboids I believe. Yeah, I mean, you don't feel bad or like the movie is lesser once the amazing worms show up. Right. But if it was just Val and Earl actually like moving trash for an hour and a half. That's fine. Right? Are we above this trash moving it or are we amongst the trash? Are we the trash waiting to be moved? Like there's a version of this script. <laughs> <laughs> this movie exists. Like I would watch that flip. And that's that's what I think is so rare right like i've actually been watching a lot of creature features this last week you know kind of watching all the tremors not all of them but as many as i could get through right <laughs> i watched a uh, deep star six uh, you okay. know i'm really like leviathan i love underwater movies i'm getting ready for the underwater movie this weekend actually right and i love these monster flicks and i have to say among all of them like jaws is still the pinnacle right jaws and jurassic park are the best group of characters and actors probably in almost any monster flick right right but tremors i would put right in that exact same class yeah i actually would too and the something that they do um they start early on with the discovery of like uh ed of ed deems the um the the first body they find which is pretty right. fascinating and again like that's not the way you'd imagine a movie about sandworms to start is a guy like keel hauled at the top of the electrical tower which is like yeah, probably well, one of this my guy climbs up there and they think it's their buddy. They climb up and it's actually this old drunkard. Right. Yeah. But he's sitting up there with a rifle and sat there for enough days to die of thirst. Yeah. And like that's the kind of like that's the kind of thing that Tremors does differently than I think because there's a, also another world where this movie begins with like, you know, uh, <laughs> this is a weird example, but like um Vincent D'Onofrio and Men in Black. There's a world in which this movie starts with like that farmer getting like dragged underneath, and then that's the beginning of the movie, which is pretty boring to me. <laughs> What's great is this movie starts with this, yeah, like waking for waiting for grab dough, uh, Val yeah. and Earl bit, and then you start with a guy sitting in an electrical tower rather than like, like you know they do the old Fred bit later on, but like it starts very differently than I think we probably expected a yeah. movie like a movie called Tremors to start. So when you get there, you get at the top, and it's a guy who died of dehydration. That's a like right out of like the fifties, great like sci-fi creature feature stuff, but also not your typical way to start a movie about things that take place inside the ground. It's very yeah, very I very. Think, cool. I think that's the crazy cool part, right? Is for creatures that are subterranean in nature. And we go out of our way to create really fun visual games to keep them from having to do the giant prosthetic worms every single shot. Right. Uh, almost all the carnage is on Front Street, right? Yeah. So it is these two guys that are pushing garbage and literally get sprayed and shit, right? As they're yeah. having their, like, we deserve more in life. They're about, we turned down free beer. I can't believe we turned down free beer. They're leaving perfection, right? The town right. perfection. They're leaving to go. And it becomes this weird, because I think he even says the line where Earl's just like, are there higher powers at work? Because <laughs> as they're trying to leave town, it is almost this, you know, Herculean task keep uh, popping in front of them, right? The old yeah. dead man. They have to take him to the doctor. They're like, fuck this. Let's get out of town. Holy shit. What happened to Farmer Fred's bit, right? His right. fence is all blown apart. You see the mutilated sheep. You see the body in the electrical tower. And probably my favorite visual gag of the movie is when there's just the hat sitting in the sinkhole. And they yeah. lift the hat up and Farmer Fred's face is looking out at them in terror. The rest of his body under. I was like, that is oh, fucking beautiful. I love right? that. That's one of my favorite. That's probably one of the better reveals, too, because you know it's coming. Again, it's like one of those. This movie doesn't. <laughs> this movie does an excellent job of like. It's telegraphing the past like the entire time. You know what's going to happen. And yet it's still not like scary like, ah, but just so much fun. Like I think the best part about Tremors and the thing that everyone forgets about these kinds of movies is that they let you in on the gag pretty quickly. Like yeah. you know what's going down. You know how this movie's going to play out. So like until you up until you meet Rhonda, 
it's a fairly easy movie of like sort of this cat and mouse with these giant worms under the ground and then yeah. Earl and Val like running away or running towards them. It's pretty interesting. Like well, it's it's cool because they they let Kevin Bacon utilize his comedic chops. Yeah. And what the movie doesn't do is it's cuz this is the it, it walks betwixt two genres, right? It's not really all the way a comedy. Uh, but no. I kind of I we've talked about this before. I hate comedy and drama as genres. Because I was like, every movie should have bits of comedy and drama, right? I think it's right. sellout, like, boring, artsy flick that you're not interested. That's what people call dramas. Right. And comedies like lesser movies, you know, as long as you get laughs, you can forget about all the other bits of filmmaking. <laughs> and this one, I, I have heard people say that they don't think it's scary enough and this and that. I think what they do is, what, and what I, the way I look at horror movies, right, how I actually judge most of them. And I, I'm different. I am wildly scared of movies, which seems weird considering the movies I watch. Right. Like last night I watched this great new movie, Daniel Isn't Real, and it sent my mind reeling, and right. I couldn't sleep, right? I was like, that's fucking scary. What if, like, the cheese slid off the cracker, as my grandpa would say, and you're, like, actually losing your mind and don't know? That's scary to me. This one is scary on two fronts to me, which is, one, imagine being prey to something you couldn't see, right? That's fucking scary. Yeah, and it's totally. a good symbolism for a lot of things in our life. Maybe I'm just getting older. And two, it has a very much that it's a wonderful life scare of <laughs> why are these guys not able to just drive away? Like right. <laughs> there is this this mocking God aspect of this movie. Yeah, and both of those become scary. It's almost as if God is like, I invented these giant worms to keep you as the fucking trash pusher lot in life. Right, <laughs> and that's doubly scary. So to me, for a horror movie, I don't think you have to like, you don't have to have me white knuckling and crying at the end of the movie. I don't as think so either. As long as it's believable that the characters in the film would be scared of what's happening. And I think right. Tremors accomplishes that. Right. I agree. I mean, I think that's the benefit of a movie like Tremors is that you're not trying to scare your audience. You're just trying to scare your characters. So like by proxy, we enjoy the scare rather than get scared ourselves. Like I, right. I feel like that's the best way that I would put it. Like, look, I grew up, I was not a horror kid. I didn't watch a lot of like, I didn't watch Like I watched enough creature features, but definitely not as many as you per se. But like, I also knew watching this movie that I wasn't going to get scared other than being scared of something grabbing me from under the ground, which is always a fear no matter what. But yeah, like, right. <laughs> like if you're not scared of something like that, you're insane regardless. But like that to me, like the idea of tremors itself is scary. So really you don't need to add any more fear onto the, on top of it. You just have to watch the events unfold. And that's really kind of the fun of the movie. And that's where yeah. the joy comes from is not in the scare, but in the, uh, in, in the watching Val and Earl, like outsmart the or outsmart yeah. the, like the, I mean, honestly, like the lead up to the meeting of Rhonda where they like, <laughs> they're getting chased by the worm and the worm literally dies from impact on a like cement wall. You're like, that's amazing. Like, cause that's it's, good. it's, it's great. It's a great way to like, it's a great way to stop a beat and be like, all right, what's next? Like that's, that's pretty cool. Like yeah. there's something about that. That's so plainly simple. And this happens a lot in this movie is like the deaths of these worms are so often met with like such plainly obvious, uh, the like to me, the graboids are not smarter than the people. That's like the part that I love the most about this. Aren't is like, this they? Is, they are definitely not. We'll get to that because I I disagree. I think. Oh, really? I think I got a hard disagree on that. Not got that hard- anyone in this town is uh really busting brains. You know what I mean? But <laughs> but this is what I'm. To me, this movie operates in a way as a a Tom and Jerry kind of adventure in a way. But what I Again, this uh, I don't love horror comedies often because I feel like what it is is people want to sell the tickets on all the blood and guts and tits. Right. But they don't actually want to do any of the narrative work of why is this scary, right? Like I've seen, you know, heavy metal band that summons a demon. Oh, we got a lot of, you know, oh, my guitar's a dick. Oh, we're battling, whatever. Right. But there's no actual underlying concept of why is it scary, or what am I supposed to think about with the band that summons a demon, right? Like, there should be something. Right. And Tremors offers an enormous amount of these moments. Like, imagine the old couple 
who have worked their whole lives to have a little fucking plot in the middle of nowhere to look at that beautiful sky. Right. And after a hard day of work and doctoring and just being good people, you get fucking eaten. Imagine being Chang, just trying to keep a business afloat right. in the middle of this godforsaken nowhereville. Yeah, this busted old soda machine, and that causes you to inadvertently die. Like, how right. could you not relate to that? These are terrifying moments of death to me. <laughs> and I, yeah, old farmers just literally out there hoeing for weeds in the rocks and sand. Right. Like, these are sad and scary lots in life. And that, that to me is, that's what I always come back to. And for me, I can find enough of the actual fear in Tremors to let it play out. Because then, like you said, then it's not about, oh, is this scary enough? Like, when I watched The Grudge recently, right? It's one of the most unforgivingly bad movies I've seen in years. And it's it's got, like, the three problems of a horror movie. One, it's fucking boring. Right. Two, it takes itself so unforgivingly seriously that the only thing that I can be left with is you have to haunt and scare me to the bone because there's nowhere else for my mind to go. Right. And it fails miserably on those, right? And that's why in Tremors, if you give me the really good fear and premise... Then, like you said, now that I love the characters, and I do care if Val and Earl were to get eaten. Right. Right? It becomes this fun game of how are they going to get out. And, again, I think the screenwriters do a brilliant job of keeping the games fresh and interesting with what is essentially make a – it's, it's you know, the uh, quiet place or whatever. If you yeah, make totally. a sound, something's going to grab your foot. <laughs> and they keep that shockingly fresh throughout the entire 90 minutes for me. Yeah, Totally. I mean, I think that's like kind of the, yeah, I mean, the freshness of this movie, and it's amazing, it's made in 1990, and again, the freshness of the movie itself is simply that it's not meant to take itself, it's not taking itself seriously at all, and then the benefit of that is that, again, you get to like really enjoy these characters, so like you are sad when like Walter gets, like Walter getting eaten in his own Might be one of my favorite kills in a movie, by the way. Like, it's so just, like, nonsense and silly. But, like, I still felt really bad. I'm like, oh, Walter. Poor Walter Chang. Like, what the hell? Why you got to kill the Asian guy? That one was a bummer. Yeah, it really was. Like, that's, like, one of those. Yeah, so we have great characters, and I think we have a great Let's walk through the Graboids, because I think they are a stealth MVP candidate. Because while I think it's important in the movie that they do so much of it without showing you the creature... Yeah, I think the creature design in this is absolutely stellar. It's pretty great, and, and it the doesn't actual really... thinking about how this creature would exist in this world is even better. Yeah, totally. I I really like that. What I liked the most is that these creatures have it's the um it's the worm the worm mouth that yep. probably is one of the best design characteristics of any sort of creature I've seen in a movie ever because it makes it that much more not just entertaining but also lethal like. So from the scare perspective, you have a giant sandworm who, like, unless you're directly under him, yeah, that's fine. But he's got these weird little tentacle things that come out of his yes. mouth that are going to take you down anyways and drag you to hell. Like, that's another level of scary, but it also provides another level of just, like, awesome sight gags. Like, great stuff. Yeah, and they stuff. almost operate as kind of the brains of the operation. Right, Like, yeah. breaking things in the mouth when it gets hit with the fucking pickaxe, right? Mm-hmm the tentacle reaches up and can pull that shit out. You know what I mean? So it has all these really cool, because it is, it's like, how would something like that repel this? Oh, right. the tentacles can reach back and handle it. That's pretty cool. Why are they so fast with these giant bulbous elephantine bodies? They show they have these little, like, thousands of fingers that propel them through. Right, right. It's just really, it's one of those movies, too, <laughs> and I know this is sacrilege to say anything against Jaws, But when the shark jumps out of the water, it does look stupid. To this day, that shark looks stupid, and you forgive it because the movie is so brilliant in its execution. Right. That by the end, you're like, all right, I'll trick myself into this shark being some kind of figment of their fucking dumb imaginations, right? Right, Their alcohol, sun-riddled brains (laughs) have created this dumb rubber monstrosity, right? Right. I think when Tremors, though, when these worms appear, I think they're fantastic. I think they're great. And I, I think the creature work in this is really, really strong. Totally. Like, I love the gag when they bust through the wall of the survivalist house. <laughs> and they, Reba and her husband are just grabbing. I mean, they shoot probably 500 rounds into this thing. 
By He's the even way, like busting out the elephant gun. <laughs> that I thought that was a great gag. That what might be one of my all time favorite camera moves in a movie. By the way, is like they're just like shooting him, and then like the camera pulls back, and there's the wall of weapons, and you're just like watching him just grab guns off the wall, and you oh, see. Yeah. By the way, did you know this was Reba McIntyre's first movie? That she like surprised me. No, I mean not, she wasn't anything special, but like so I love she's like magazine. And then finally, he was really good in this movie. And then finally, you get like this amazing that the elephant gun thing is so much yeah. fun, dude. Like it, that's a raw performance like this is how you land season after season of Reba, <laughs> for sure. No, I thought that gag was great though, right? Like I like when the worm pops out of the earth before you know trying to get Val and them. Yeah. I love that the tentacles are really great. The way they because when the worm pops into the car, right? The car with the woman that's terrible. Uh-huh. Yeah, but the way the tentacles, like when they're grabbing the water tower uh, ladder to rip that off, right? right, grabbing onto things, it's really they they have a pretty strong idea of how these things would actually hunt and interact. And this is where I was getting to. I think these things are actually really smart. I I think they're. I, I'm not saying they're dumb animals. Like they learn like, to attack uh, the weaknesses of the buildings above, right? right. I'm not getting it. They learned to dig a trench for the the bobcat thing that's driving the slow speed pursuit. They did a last Jedi before the last Jedi, right? The slow speed pursuit out of town, but they just did the logical thing, which is cut them off at the pass, right? They dug a trench. That's smart. At the end, the tentacle throws the bomb back at the rocks. I'm not saying they are not learning animals. What I'm saying is, (laughs) uh, what's nice is that the humans who are battling against them are not dumber than they are like i think that well, i think what's nice is because of the humans they're battling there is a a much more balanced level of iq <laughs> per side because <laughs> you essentially had two things which is let's uh fire guns or sit on rocks that's like the two battle strategies i love it oh yeah that's the other thing i i, I do love there is like this great like there's this great like movie magic thing of like well if we're on the rocks we're safe it's like oh <laughs> these worms have figured out how to kill people, how to eat, like how to chew through art, like how to chew through concrete and all this other <laughs> shit. But boy, rocks just the technology is just insane. Yeah, they want to just dig circles under the rock and have that shit drop down. No, I mean, I I'm mean, no geologist. I don't know any of this shit. To me, is it believable? I'm like, yes, rocks are hard on your teeth. OK, that makes perfect sense to my non-scientist. Brain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. It works. Works for me. Like. I mean, I think the idea was that, like, if you're on rocks, the, they're not uh, they're not vibrating or something like that. Because no, that's can't always burrow through the rock. It's that's too solid. What, it's just that's it's what it is. Solid. Yeah, but they could definitely get through into the armory, which again, you just totally need it because you need that line. Well, because at the end. an armory is a cement wall, even the thickest cement wall, right? A foot, right. two feet of cement or cinder block is easier to bust through than granite. The mountains are granite. Bro. True, not wrong. that's what they talked about. Uh, what are some of your favorite set piece gags in this movie? I thought they had, I think my favorite scene to this day is the lawnmower sequence. Okay. I think the lawnmower sequence really utilizes the the gag of the movie, right? Which is you cannot create vibrations on the ground or sound. Right. To the most thrilling impact, right? I thought sending the lawnmower out was really cool. The lawnmower tips. I love the underground shot. Or yeah. like seeing the ground crest above. And when they, that was one of the first time I think they cut to Tremor's cam where you see under the earth, which is cool. Which is awesome. (laughs) When it it turns to shake on bacon, right? Yeah. He's running out there. They've done the rock, paper, scissors. You know, they start making noise. He gets to the cat. It's kind of this perfect use of all of the games of the movie in one scene. Right. And again, it's, it's, this is what I'm always impressed with too, is a scene like that really can only play out in one way. Right? Like, you've written scripts. I've written scripts. It's really interesting when you write a scene that only has one logical conclusion. Right. And you still make it very thrilling and effective. Because was there anyone in any theater that thought in that moment they were about to get eaten and not make it to that bobcat? Right. To pull them out of town? No. There's no possibility anyone thought that wouldn't work. But when it's happening, you are fully clenched and holding your breath. You're scared. I think that's incredible when movies can pull that off. I think some of my favorite stuff comes from the pole vaulting bits. Like that is like, (laughs) 
that That's might good. be that might be some of the more like entertaining like sight gag shit. You're like, so these <laughs> all of a sudden everyone is an expert at the pole vault. And it was just like it's one of those like it's one of those like uh the floor is lava bits. It's just it's it's too yeah. good to pass up, man. Like it's again, this, this movie does such a good job of like just nailing on the head all the great like the floor is lava bits. Like that's right. really kind of what the movie is, which but is that's awesome. what I mean. It has essentially one game, yeah. and they keep finding ways throughout the film to reinvent it. Right? Totally. So here we are in this armored car in the desert. Oh, now we're caught. Oh, we'll get to the rocks. Oh, now we have bombs. We're gonna go fishing for worms. Like that scene when they go fishing for worms the first time and it blows up everywhere. <laughs> I was like, this movie is fucking outstanding. It just knows exactly what I want. Right. Right. At each minute. And I love at the end, <laughs> the showdown. It's a classic moment for Val and Earl, right? These guys were this this higher power has just conspired to put these new alpha <laughs> predators in their system. Right. Because it is the great unexplained thing. Because this is one of those movies where you imagine it to have, like, the blob remake ending. We're like, yeah. all right, when are the, you know, helicopters for the military going to land and be like, right. round them up. This is an important Russia destroying totally, weapon. <laughs> totally know? what you expect to happen. <laughs> yeah. And they never get back to where did these alpha predators come from and what have they been eating for so long? What's driving? doesn't matter. No, it doesn't There's matter. There's just Val and Earl standing out there after the worm has lobbed a piece of bomb back at them, right? right. Standing out there face to face with this thing. And Kevin Bacon just goes, these things ain't smarter than us. And I was like, <laughs> fuck yes, dude. Man versus worm. It's perfect. And it's just, it plays out brilliantly, right? The use of the bomb to rattle him. Right. And then the worm pulls a fucking Thelma and Louise right out of the side of a cliff. I was like, this is amazing. That's this is probably, so good. <laughs> that's one of my all-time favorites is, yeah, like, it's just, like, outsmarting the worm to blow his, like, blow his load out the other side. Like, can you fly, you sucker? Like, yeah. that's that's just that's classic that's classic movie making man like that's amazing it's that's amazing great. how that plays out that's yes. great like fun spielbergian filmmaking is <laughs> just like of course that's how that goes like that's that's what these movies are made for man like i love it's just what makes it so good did you know kevin bacon thought this was like the worst movie he made at the time he made it i'm telling you for a fact right i'm sure kabake would sit there and say well i was in mystic river and apollo 13 and all these other fucking lesser movies Right? Movies for your uncle, as I call them, right? Right. Not as important as Tremors no, and no. Flatliners and stuff. Apparently, I the, think this is the pinnacle bacon. Apparently, at the time when he made the movie, he's quoted as saying he fell to the sidewalk and started screaming to his pregnant wife, I can't believe I'm doing a movie about underground worms. And later on, he went on to call Tremors the single most fun time he's ever had making a movie in his entire career. Yes. And I tell you what, K-Bake, we enjoy it as well. Like, thank you, Kabake. That's it's about time. <laughs> that's absolutely how that should be. And that's absolutely how you should feel about this kind of movie. It's like too much fun not to watch too much fun to be had altogether. That's, that's why they made fucking that's five what I sequels hate about this, too. Right. Is they're reduce, reducing it to, oh, it's the giant worm movie. There but is not. really fun acting in this movie. This it's is a, like a really fun stage play. With just an extra amazing subterranean layer of genre. It's awesome. I mean, yeah, that's exactly. I, I mean, I can't believe, because this is the thing. What are our favorite things about Bacon, right? He's got the really good leading man looks, but he kind of looks a little roughed up by life. Not too beautiful. Right. He's like the obtainable attractive, he's the, right? He's the obtainable leading man. Yeah. Great at comedy. Yes. Great at physicality. Um, amazing comedic timing. Like, no one yeah. delivers a line in this movie like Kevin Bacon. Like, yeah. he nails it every time. Like and That's what I mean. This this movie, to me, is where Bacon shows off the full range in my favorite way. Absolutely. Right? Like, does he have better dramatic roles? Maybe. Okay. Has he made a better movie? Hard to argue, <laughs> but possibly. Right? I, mean, I think Tremors is the best Kevin Bacon movie. Again, there's but, plenty. I'm sure there's plenty of uncles out there who would argue that Mystic River was far more important and better. But yeah, Apollo 13 was important. I'm like, then why was the movie so boring? <laughs> right? I remember watching that movie and being like, God, I hope this thing blows up 30 <laughs> minutes in, so I don't have to finish this movie. I very that much might, Apollo 13. I've I've had this argument with a couple people. It's <laughs> Apollo 13 is one of those movies. 
that has like really weird stands just hidden in crowds. Where like you'll just make an Apollo thir I guess it's weird for me to still be making Apollo thirteen cracks. Yeah, wow. But every night you'll have someone pop up. That is one of the best movies ever made. And I'm like, wow, Jesus, you're like still holding it. Like you've watched Apollo 13 more than like three times in your life. I mean, if look, a movie's one of the best movies ever made, right? If you say that out of your mouth, you have to have seen the movie more than three times. Look, I can tell you for a fact I've watched Apollo 13 more than three times. And you I can also... You fucking liar. You and absolute I, lying sack of shit. There's I'm absolutely no way. not lying. I love that movie. But I can also tell you <laughs> no, it is fucking not even... I've seen that more than three times. I can also tell you it's not even close to being in the pantheon of the greatest movies of all time. Like No. It wasn't even a top 20 movie the year it was released. Get the fuck out of here. You're telling me for a fact that you've seen Apollo 13 three plus times. Yes, I'm telling you for a fact. Why? I like it. I but I like space program stuff. Like there's a like that HBO doc series about the Earth to the Moon. Like I like I like that kind of stuff. Fair enough. If it's your kink, fair enough. Yeah, like that's I all it that. is. But like for anyone to say it's one of the best <laughs> movies ever made, also it's like like historically inaccurate in a lot of ways. And there's See, like I don't the, give a fuck about historic. That movie desperately needed a trimmer's worm. Like, if Kevin Bacon is sliding cabin to cabin trying to put gum on airlocks and shit, All and right. you just see a... And, like, All a right. tremor's worm popped out, Apollo 13 may have actually been a good movie. All right, how's this? I think for this pod, we might have to cut Apollo 13 with tremors to make Holy it... Holy shit. To create... You know what it would look like? It would look like 13, that movie life. 13 tremors. <laughs> it would look like that movie life. Apollo tremors. Yeah, I'd watch that. Yeah, absolutely. I would like that movie better. That see, we talked about doing a uh, a theme of movies once, where it's super acclaimed movies that we didn't like, that we have to go back and rewatch and see if we were just being wrong. <laughs> and Apollo thirteen is way up on my list of movies that people tell me are good, and I'm I don't understand. That might be worth it. I mean, I don't want to say the other ones because then I'll get lambasted. Just kidding. No Country for Old Men. Why? I, tr Question I truly believe. I think what's. I think what. I mean, look, we're obviously here to talk about Tremors, and I absolutely like. We love this movie. Like, this is right. truly. This is definitely top Kevin Bacon. Like, but I'm here to defend. This is why it's important to talk about Apollo 13, because <laughs> that movie gets fucking cocooned in a spaceship uh, or spaceship, not spaceship. That would be a good tagline for that movie. But no, it gets cocooned in a fucking spacesuit of acclaim and critical reviews and award season buzz and it just is considered above a movie like tremors <laughs> and i'm telling you right now i think people any person on earth like even ron howard you would have a hard time winning a debate against me that tremors is not a more successful movie across every aspect of filmmaking than apollo 13 <laughs> I, I i think that i can tell you as someone who likes the movie the reason I enjoy Apollo 13 <laughs> is because it's a great character piece between the three of those guys. Sure. Like Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, or Bill Paxson are wonderful actors, and it's awesome yes. to watch them work. That's they're the what three, they're the three versions of every man. That's right. the only thing I enjoy but about that's, that movie. But that's the draw for the movie. Like right. that's why you watch that movie. If you're watching it but for like you if know, that movie was Val and Earl stuck in a spaceship, it's a better movie. Well, I mean, that's neither it's here nor there. It's an absolutely better movie. That's neither here nor there. That's obvious. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't people, think we need to do, yeah. we don't have to debate the, that. The, the fucking kid gloves that have to be laid upon Apollo 13. Maybe it's the Hanks factor. I don't know. We got to get real. We got to get real. <laughs> I, I, I very much like it. It's a good movie. I know at least one listener right now who I'm definitely going to get a text message from about Apollo 13. And yeah, I'm me. ready for war. Yeah, yeah me. That's fine. No, but, but this is what I, I – it makes me sad that a movie like this, through the brilliance uh, – this is the best thing about movies, right? Is that you can take the weirdest elements and parts, right? We talk about this all the time. That's yeah. why we came up with the theme of alchemy, right? Because you just start throwing weird shit in a pot. You know, uh, middle of the desert. Why is Chang there? Where right. did these worms come from, right? Like, what is happening? Is there some kind of higher power in God? Where's the government? Pfft. Survivalist. Pfft. Reba McIntyre intro. Pfft. And next thing you know, you're like, wow, this movie's better than Apollo 13. This is crazy. How does this occur? And I'm fascinated by it. I mean, I Kevin think Kevin Bacon's on his knees screaming at God that he's in Tremors. And it may have been his best movie. That's what I love about movies. 
Yes. Is that the giant worm movie can truly be the best piece of art that you're a part of? I mean, I think that that's probably the best part about that's the best part about this entire exercise <laughs> of us curating monthly, and in particularly this curation, which is yes, Kevin Bacon has been in some very strange movies, but he is good in all of them particularly. He's and, fantastic, and that's why we love Trimmer so much. Because, again, like, as much as I enjoy Apollo 13, as much as I think it's a great three-hander between Tom Hanks, Bill Paxton, and him, no one like beats... you're challenging me to a fight. No one beats Kevin Bacon and... Like, you're totally right. If Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward did Apollo 13 as just the two of them, and they played, like, one of the characters together, I'd watch the movie the hell out of that. Like... Imagine Val and Earl, and they're like, we're handymen, we're smart, we gotta fix this spacecraft and get back to perfection. You know what I mean? That would be a great movie. That I, would be a better movie. It's a really – but that's the beauty of Tremors <laughs> itself is that, like you're, like, you're totally right. Like, Kevin Bacon can absolutely despise this the moment he makes it, and yet it becomes this cult hit. It spawns four movies and a fucking TV series. Like, it's all Dude, kinds of – I think of, there are actually six Tremor movies, if I'm not Are mistaken. there really? I no think shit. there is. I think because Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell might be the most recent one. Uh, the, legend, now they can, the legend like, they begins. Can oh wait, no, shit. Cold Day in Hell is two, 2018. Yeah, they've got a lot of Tremors. Oh movies. shit! Okay, this is also known as Tremors Six. This is fascinating. Yeah, They're, and what's cool about the the creatures is they keep evolve. Like even by Tremors Two, right? Fred Ward is still in it, right? If I remember right, and the first one they see is a little Tremor that uh, fucking has feet. It's above ground now. It looks like the Mouser from the old Turtles. Right, And that's what's cool is it becomes this hyper-evolving, almost xenomorph-type creature. It's like redneck aliens. Right. Right? So it becomes – because then it explains away the biggest plot hole in the first one, which is how could these giant predators survive, right? So let's say there's a family of them. They all weigh more than, you know, a bus or more than a truck, let's say, more than a truck. They would have to be eating constantly. What the fuck are they eating? How has no one come across this before? Maybe this is what got the Donner party. There's all these fun things that you can do. Right. And once you describe them as a hyper-evolving organism. And I don't know if the Tremor series ever got to Aliens. I feel like we should just... This is what we should do. We should just do all of the Tremors movies. Ugh. Not right now, but we'll add them to the list. I'll add them to the, the infamous tome of books or list we have for this movie. The infamous tome. But yeah, ultimately... To me, Tremors is wonder. Is, Tremors is a wonderful movie if you like a throwback to your creature feature stuff. But if you love Kevin Bacon and you want to see a peak performance of a movie that he thought originally was going to be terrible, you got to watch Tremors and also enjoy it. Like, don't try to be scared. Try to just enjoy and be on for the ride, man. That's the yeah, beauty man. of Tremors. Well, this is the like. When do you get this kind of a creature feature with this kind of quality? With an actor like Kevin Bacon at the helm doing his best performance. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to take so much shit. I mean, we're definitely going to take... I can already hear take... the internet coming for me, Macho I'm, Man Savage style. I'm like, deeply excited for this. How dare you say this is the best Kevin I'm Bacon? I'm so excited for everyone, to set, for everyone to argue with us about if this is the best Kevin I Bacon. I hope. Come at it. You bet. You best... That's what I'm saying, though. If you jump off the roof of your houses, you best have your elephant gun, because I will devour you. <laughs> I will fucking eat you in the name of Tremors. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it for Tremors and uh, I guess a sneaky Apollo 13. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it as much as us. Again, all of the Tremors movies <laughs> just got dropped on Netflix. So you can spend time with six Tremor movies right now. What a way to start 2020, man. Stop looking at the news and what's trending and just enjoy Tremors, man. Please. Yeah, do what we can do to, uh, you know, enjoy this life a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, next week, Alex, I'll let you pick. Which bacon are we doing next? We got three left. Ooh, I think we're going to have to do Flatliners. Flatliner. Oh, we're just going hard early bacon. I like it. Flatliners, not only Kevin Bacon, but also my man, who I am the fan. I am the head of the Oliver Platt fan club, one the Platitudes. Of the, one of the first Platitudes <laughs> we've done on the show. <laughs> the Platitudes, man. Oliver Platt needs his own month. <laughs> oh, he will so get it. <laughs> but that's it. Uh, so, guys, we'll be back next week with Flatliners. I'm hoping to make it out to the theater to see a couple things. Um, I know Underwater this weekend I'm really excited about. So we're going to try to keep you guys abreast of what we're doing on there. Find us on social media. Please leave a rating and review wherever you find the show if you can. 
Share this on your socials with your worm and Kevin Bacon loving friends, man. That's our favorite way to bring people in. Find us on YouTube, uh, The Nerd Alchemist. That's plural with an S at the end. And uh, we'll be seeing you next time for Flatliners. From the film Alchemist, I'm Josh Griffey. I'm Alex Dandino. These worms ain't smarter than us! <laughs>